Hello everyone, welcome to a new term for House of Cards Challenge blog. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how I created this flower for my card for the July 2015 challenge. Our challenge is to be inspired by either the picture or the colors of our inspiration. The picture shows some food images and we'll have some more tutorials later on in the month using food images. But I decided to go with the color scheme and create this shabby chic card. Um, my sentiment is from Waltzing uh, mouse stamps. It's from their Safe Harbor Sentiments stamp set in case you were wanting to get that. Um, it's a beautiful scriptural and inspirational set. Um, but I wanted to share how to do this flower and I was inspired by my friend Gracie who works with me at House of Cards and she'll have another tutorial on something similar to this flower later on at her YouTube channel is awesome. It's Gracie Ellie Designs. She does a lot of flower tutorials and that is why I was inspired to do this. So what you're going to need, I'm going to put this off camera, is you're going to need two large flower punches and my lighting is really bad so you can't see. These are really a light pink, they're not white. Let me see if I can adjust this. That might be a little bit better, hopefully. So two large pinks, three medium sized pink flowers, and two small pink flowers. And you can see that the shapes are not all the same. Some of them have more petals than other ones. And so um, it's just about layering and making it look right. You don't have to use flowers that um, technically go together or that are from a die set or anything like that. So if you're worried about that, don't worry about that. These were all punched, okay? So the first step that I did was I took some pink ink and a sponge and I sponged all of my edges. And I didn't just do the front because you're going to also be using a tool to curl them later. I did the front and the back and it just gives it a little bit extra texture, okay? And I'm only going to do one of each flower so that you can kind of see what it looks like sponged and then I'll go off camera for a second, do the rest of my sponging and come back, okay? So there's the big one. Can you even see? I hope so. My lighting is just not good. So there's the big one. Here's the medium one. And now I'm going to do the small one. And even the small ones do front and back. And my inspiration for this flower was like a cabbage rose or some sort of big flower like that. So there's the small one. Okay, I'm going to go off camera. I'll be right back with the rest of my sponged flowers. Okay, I am back and I have sponged all of my flowers. See, oh, my lighting is so bad. I'm so sorry. So I've sponged all my flowers. The next step is to get them wet. And you can do this a couple of different ways. You can use just water, but I like to use Glimmer Mist because it gives it a little bit extra shine and it also helps the flower stiffen as it dries. Here's my uh, really expensive tool for this. It's just a piece of cardboard. And I'm just going to lay all of my flowers out. And you can spray them one at a time or you can spray them all at the same time. It's totally up to you. And I'm actually going to move my black shaping pad because I don't want to get glimmer mist on it. And just liberally spray them, okay? Because you want them to be kind of malleable. And I'm actually going to also turn them over and spray them on the back so that they're kind of good and soaking. If you use paper other than cardstock that's a little bit less thick, then you're not going to need to do both sides, but I found that with my cardstock paper flowers, I do need to spray both sides. Okay, so I've got those, and they're going to go off camera here for a second. So I've got those, and I'm going to get my flower shaping mat, which is nice and yellow, and I'm going to take one of these larger flowers. You can't see. I guess I should show you what I'm doing. I'm kind of pressing off the excess shimmer mist, glimmer mist. I'm going to bring that over here. I'm going to get my flower shaping tool for the large ones. I'm going to be using a 12 millimeter ball head stylus and I'm going to just circular motion all around each petal to begin with. And as you can see, it's already starting to shape itself. And 
unfortunately I'm getting some ink on my pad but that's okay and if you're finding that it's hard to shape you can always go back and spray it more now I didn't tell you what I was doing I'm doing the center of it so it's giving me this uh, shaped flower okay I'm going to show you how it looks with the other two sizes then I'm going to go off camera and shape the rest of them and then show you how to layer it together sorry I'm uh, sponging off okay or not sponging off pushing off some of the excess glimmer mist same thing for this oh except for I don't think I want to use a 12 milliliter or millimeter we're gonna use an 8 millimeter for this smaller one it's gonna give a better shape and I think I'm gonna start by just going around the center this one is not really working with me as well so I'm going to kind of hold it in place as I do each petal and this is breaking down the fibers there we go sorry big flower there we go I needed to just kind of hold it in place for a second okay so now I'm doing the center after I did the petals and see it's giving me that same rounded shape so there's what the medium one looks like the smaller one I'm going to try the eight millimeter as well and this one is kind of just continue to go around and around around the outside and you can even just kind of push it down and twist this and it's going to give you the conical shape that you're looking for okay so do you see how those are shaped okay I'm going to shape the rest of mine and I'll be right back okay I'm back with all of my shaped flowers I've gone back to a, ba a black background because I think you can see it a little better they've all sort of dried and you can see some of them are a little bit more conical shaped than others and that's okay because we're gonna kinda want that variation on our final flower over here okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a stylus with a very small head and I'm gonna take the edge of these flowers and I'm gonna kind of roll them in to the words the center Okay, so do you see how that happened? So I take it, I fold it over, I use two hands, I roll it, and then I kind of pull it back out. And that's why I wanted both sides inked, because that way you're going to see the dark pink on the inside as well as the outside of the petal, just like a real flower. And I'm going to do that to all of these around the edges. And um, you're going to be able to still try and shape this as you put it together so it's not too big of a deal how well you do this how deeply or not really deeply tightly I guess is the word it's rolled okay so it's gonna have kind of like this type of a look versus this and I'm gonna go ahead and go off camera once again sorry I'm going off camera so much so that I can finish rolling all my edges and then I will come back and we will actually layer the flower together. Okay, I apologize for the strange blip. For some reason, the first time I did the video, things got messed up. So I'm back to show you how to layer together your flower. So what you're going to do is you're going to take each section separately is what I found to be easiest. You're going to take some glue. I like using Elmer's Craft Bond glue just because it's liquid and it's tacky so I can move my flowers around. Um, you could use a glue runner. It just doesn't hold as well, but since you could, you know, add a brad into the center of your flower, it would be okay. And so I'm just going to take and put some glue like that. I'm going to take my flower and I'm going to offset the petals around each other. And that's part of the reason why I like the Elmer's glue because I can like finagle and move my petals to where they are layered. So they're not one on top of each other. And I think I can show you better like this. They are going every other one. And see, I still need to finagle this a little bit to get it exactly where I want it. And so I'll set that aside. I'm going to do my middle layer now. I'm going to do it exactly like I did my my large layer, add a little bit of glue, offset my petals, and you can 
move your petals around and push them out and kind of reshape them as you go with your fingers. So I've got my two layered on top here of my middle size. And now I'm going to add the third one to where it's the, the, the petals are the same placement as the first flower that's underneath. Kind of squeeze that in there. And like I said, this is why I like the liquid glue because I feel like I can move my flower the way that I need to. Okay, so there's that. There's the middle section of your flower. And now the teeny tinies. Just a teeny bit of glue in there. Not too much. And offset my petals again with the small one. Okay. This one's a little bit harder to get to stick. Okay, so then I've got my small one. And now all I need to do is layer them together. Put some glue in here in my biggest flower base. Take these and I'm going to offset this bottom layer with this layer, top layer of the large one. So you can see how that looks without my small ones in it. Add a little tiny bit of glue add my smallest ones. And you're going to want to definitely set that aside to dry before you add your brad or whatever else in there. Let me show you another one that I've done too. Okay, this one is dry. So what I would do at this point is I would take a um, some way to punch through, so like either a, oh, a pair of hole punches or whatever, I'd punch and then I could add my brad as the center. And unfortunately I forgot to grab that. But I have these fun metal brads that I used. Let me see if I can grab my card again. I used a metal brad in the center of this, okay? You could also just use some flower stamens that you can buy and poke holes and get those in. And then Oh, let me bring that card back. I'm sorry. I wanted to show you how I made these leaves. And unfortunately, I already did it for my other video. And I don't have any other ones punched. But I want to just kind of show you what I did, kind of. So I took a light green color of cardstock. So it's this color. What I did was I took dark ink and I sponged around the edges. And then I doused them really, really well. Like this was 10 minutes ago, so you can see it was really, really wet with my Glimmer Mist. And I did not use a sponge, I just did direct inking with the pad on there. And since these are kind of dry, I'll show you how I shape them. I kind of just take my largest ball and I just kind of went like this around the edge a couple times. Let me get that back down just a couple times to give it just a little bit of shape and I did not sponge the both sides of these leaves I only sponged one side of the leaf okay. and then to add them to the bottom of your flower you might want to wait to do the center of your flower till you have the leaves on the bottom of your flower that way you can glue your leaves where you want them on the back of your flower, okay? And just kind of finagle, figure out where you want them. And you can do as many or as, or as little as you want. Like you could even just leave it with the two. I like it with the three because then it created a little bit of a frame here on my card. And so you can glue that together. And then you can take your little brad, put that in as the center of your flower can't really see kind of so you'd have this flower center and then after it's completely dried you can add it to your card base and the way that I added this to my card base was um, with some hot glue actually that way I knew that it was gonna stick on there and not come off so that is how you create a cabbage rose is what I'm calling it or I guess it could also be a peony so Leave me comments below if you have any questions or concerns or if you need some tips. Um, I hope you join us this month at House of Cards. We'll have more tutorials later on in the month. And until next time, hugs and happy stamping, friends!